So what is hypothyroidism? Hypothyroidism essentially is um, an underactive um, thyroid gland and thyroxine is a hormone which simply regulates metabolism. I had heard of it but I didn't really know anyone with it and so I hadn't paid any attention to it at all and uh, I was I was really really shocked. But acquired is the commonest that we see in general practice uh, often associated with um, uh, autoantibody autoimmune uh, disease uh, and congenital hypothyroidism is very rare um, with an incidence of around about one in 4,000. 100% congenital hypothyroidism. So they didn't know um, I was hypothyroid because the testing wasn't in place when I was born. It was before the, I think it's the six day test, um, or the, the six, the, the blood test that's done at six days old. If you have a symptom, what is the likelihood of you having uh, hypothyroidism, well, it's, it's vanishingly small. So symptoms may include, uh, may include constipation, um, uh, tiredness, uh, may include um, slower thinking, weight gain, depression, infertility, decreased libido. Um, and, so, and so these symptoms are, are, are not very specific and indeed are symptoms of many other diseases. The symptoms of hypothyroidism c creep up on you so slowly that you don't realise you have any symptoms. You think you're normal. Um, I, I would always wear a lot of layers, even in the house, because I was so cold all the time. But I just thought, oh, that's normal for me. We do have the ability to do a whole range of tests, uh, which include immunoglobulins, such as um, uh, thyroid peroxidase antibodies. So these are antibodies that are particularly targeted against the gland, which damage the gland and prevent it from working properly. And that's a fairly common cause of underactive thyroid that we find in general practice. You don't know exactly when it developed uh, or you can't really pinpoint because it's such a gradual disease. Um, the doctor told me that I could have, and my levels were really high, that I could have had it for a longer period of time. When would a GP refer to an endocrinologist? Um, well, there are a number of instances. The first would be uh, uncontrolled symptoms. Um, where the diagnosis may be in doubt. The second would be um, any lady who's pregnant uh, because there are uh, complications associated with pregnancy and that certainly does need extremely tight control in pregnancy. I did read into the subject and did find out that it would take um, or it might take long, longer to conceive um, and because it took about a year I knew that that was probably a factor Treatment of hypothyroidism in pregnancy um, is extremely important uh, to ensure that we maintain a very tight control because there are certain complications associated with that which include um, congenital hypothyroidism, uh, low birth weight babies, uh, something called preeclampsia where um, there's uh, associated high blood pressure with the pregnancy and um, miscarriage and, and stillbirth. Uh, there's a higher incidence of, of both of those. After the miscarriage, the, the doctor said it possibly would have contributed towards it, um, which, which reading about it afterwards, it, it does make sense because the, the growing fetus doesn't have enough thyroxine from me to develop. Another issue it's re worth remembering is that levothyroxine for treatment of hypothyroid patients, the absorption of that drug can be interfered with by um, iron, supplementation, uh, antacids and calcium uh, containing medications, so that's worth bearing in mind. You should take it an hour before eating and drinking of a morning, so that's what I've always done because especially calcium um, counteracts with the medication and it doesn't absorb properly so you're not getting the dose that you're taking fully into your blood body. The first question we're often asked is, how long will it be until I feel normal, until my symptoms uh, start to settle down, and when is my next blood test? Um, the recommendation is, is that there is a, there's a very slow um, transition to normalisation, slow in terms of months. Um, so we, we would repeat the blood test every two to three months and keep on doing that until the um, TSH and T4 uh, normalise. Quite quickly, um, I started to feel better, but I wasn't quite right. I still had her an, a horrendous memory and brain fog. And those 
were the main symptoms that were the hardest thing to get rid of. One of the concerns I think at the moment in general practice is that something like 40% of hypothyroid patients are not well controlled. And whether you are underactive or overactive, there is an excess cardiovascular mortality associated with that. Um, so one of the um, research interests I have is uh, looking at better control of that cohort of patients. I would uh, say don't expect that it to be an overnight cure. Um, it, it's an individual thing and you must uh, build up gradually with your medication. I'm often asked, uh, is there, are there any side effects of taking this medication? Well, the short answer is no, but there are symptoms associated with um, taking too much. So, um, so those symptoms would be um, sort of cardiac symptoms, arrhythmias, irregular heartbeats, atrial fibrillation, um, uh, even angina. Um, there may be other symptoms such as uh, tremor, sweatiness, um, weight loss, um, diarrhea, um, muscle cramps. Um, so, th so these are really the symptoms associated with hyperthyroidism and indeed over treatment with levothyroxine. I don't think I ever experienced real hyperthyroid um, syndrome, uh, hyperthyroid symptoms, because they always put the dose up quite cautiously. So it would always be a case of um, being slightly under replaced and then taking it up and taking it up. I think what's really good for um, patients diagnosed with hypothyroidism is that once the treatment is established and patients are well controlled, uh, they will return to a normal life and indeed a normal life expectancy. I'd say the kind of cold, the coldness, the, the itchiness, the tiredness had all gone within about four to six months. So it was really good result.